All right. Hello and welcome to anyone who's joining me right now. We're in Hoi An. It's night time and I'm still trying to figure out this uh, reverse camera thing. This is the first time I've gone live on StreamYard from the mobile. So if things don't go smoothly, it's because I'm still trying to figure it all out. So I need to go this way, I think. Yeah, that'll do. All right, so say hi and let me know who's here. If you see me look, looking like I'm looking at my screen, it's because I'm looking at my screen, trying to figure things out. And here we are by the river in Hoi An. Let me just turn the camera around and go there. I don't like the fact that it's really cumbersome to change camera on this. But here we are. This is the Hoi An River. It's just gone sunset, so the sky looks absolutely gorgeous over here in this direction. And Rich is having a chat with a couple of students who are practicing their English. They came over and started chatting with us about 10 minutes ago. And so they're there, they came over to us. Of course, the first thing they th we thought was, what are you trying to sell? And now I think that they might be trying to sell something. Because <laughs> Rich has got a couple of postcards in his hand. Um, so let me just close this. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Sarah. So this, Joanne, this has worked out to be a good time for you. And then over here, the reason I decided to start here is this lovely statue. And hello, Antonello. Thanks for joining us. This statue depicts a, a, like a teacher showing some young people how to make the silk lanterns. And we are going to see lots of the silk lanterns um, during this tour tonight. All right. So, hey, guys, do you want to say hi? Uh, she's busy trying to do something. I can write my name. Okay. Looks like they're busy at the moment. That's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk up onto the bridge here, first of all. It's, well, being in Vietnam, it's noisy. There's lots of motorcycles everywhere. And I may need to raise my voice occasionally to be heard, but that's okay. What I'm going to do here is risk life and limb and walk along this very narrow pathway. It's a perfect time for you, Sarah, is it? Excellent. Oh, look, and there's our first lantern boats just coming into the picture now. So there's this very narrow path on the bridge, but the reason I'm walking up here is so that I can look out over the river in this direction. And there we go. Now, if there's a way to zoom on this thing, I don't know it. Um, I don't believe there is. So we've got a mixture of, I guess it's a junk and there's the sampans. And we're going to see lots of these lantern boats. But there's the first couple that have appeared. And I'm going to get out of the way because there are people trying to walk past me. So let me just get past this lady. It's dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> and get off this bridge, this crazy narrow bridge. I'll leave Richard chatting to the two young students. But here's some of the silk lanterns that we're going to see lots of these tonight. It is beautiful, Joanne. It's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous city. So I'm just going to let Richard know which direction I'm heading in before I just separate from him because we'll meet up in a little while. Okay. I'm heading down that way. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm going to head down in this direction, first of all, and take you down past the tailors. And in a moment, I'm going to turn the camera around again, if I can work it out, <laughs> and show you the shirt that I had made at the tailors down here. So we've had something to eat already. We had a barn me sandwich at a barn me shop, and I'll show you that as well. 
Well, first of all, we just need to get through this intersection, past these motorbikes. I'm going to cross the road here. And you can see already that all along this stretch of road, a tailor shop. Okay, this is the tricky part, getting across the road. Right, this way. Dodging between motorbikes, and there we go. And here we have the tailor's shops. And Antonello says it's heavy motorcycle traffic. It's so much preferable to cars, so Antonello, Antonello if you can imagine if every single one of these motorbike riders was in a car, can you imagine what the traffic would be like? So here we have one tailor shop with some lovely dresses, links, and then we come up here and there's another one. We get all sorts of fancy suits made. We have lots of lovely fabrics. Hello. I like this suit here. Look at this one. Look at this jacket. Make anything, yeah? I had this shirt made the other day. I've got to show everyone what the shirt looks like. Okay, thank you. And Joanne says, you just have to keep going when you stop. That confuses them. That's exactly right. That's what happened to me earlier when I was trying to cross the road. And I hesitated. <laughs> and that's the last thing you should do. So these two buildings here, the one on the left is where Richard had a pair of shoes made. And when we catch up with him later, I'll show you the shoes. They're amazing. They're so nice. Um, he was convinced he was going to get himself some Adidas. I said, no, 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 no. Get, get, get the shoes made. And they're leather and suede and they um, are cushioned around the heel and hand stitched around the sole. And they only cost something like $80. And they've made to measure. I mean, how can you go wrong? Here, look at this. You can have a jacket made like this. There's lots of couples walking around in matching shirt, shorts, and the, the girls are wearing a, a dress that goes along with it. And then here we have a leather shop. There's lots of leather shops in Hoiang. And then here on the left here is where I had my shirt made. I actually went into this building where there are, I don't want to go in there because I know that I'm losing my signal, but there are literally dozens and dozens of tailors inside this building. It's like a, a marketplace just full of tailors. We ate here. This is where we had dinner earlier at the Bun Mi stand. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what a banh mi is, it's basically a French baguette, and the most delicious crusty bread, and it's filled with um, your choice of pork or chicken, and then you've got salads in there as well, like cucumber and coriander and mint. And these are the prices. So for just under $2 Australian, you get the tastiest sandwich it is just delicious i'm going to ask if i can go inside is it okay to go in yeah. because this place is so popular that people come along and write all over the wall so people love it here so much that they leave their mark on the wall with things like best bun me ever. And the entire wall is covered with, it's like a guest book. People have left their mark all over the wall. All right. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for anyone who's coming to Hoi, um, to Hoi An, this place is called Mr. 
Mr. Hugh. Mr. Mr. Hugh. Bun me is fantastic, isn't it, Joanne? So over on the left here, we've got a flower cellar. It's starting to get dark now, so we're going to start to see more of the lighted lanterns. But this shop here is just so colourful. That's another leather shoe place, shoes and handbags. All right. So I'm going to take my life in my hands and cross the road again one more time. In between the motorbike. Okay, here we go. We've got a we've got an opportunity now. Well, except for that guy. So Richard had a bun me at this stand the other day, but it's closed tonight. So I'm not sure what hours she keeps. Maybe she doesn't open at night time. How long can you stay in Vietnam? Um, Joanne, the the visa is up to 90 days. All right, I'll give you a quick look in here. Let's see how the signal goes. Oh, hello. <laughs> Just have a look. You want to shop me? Uh, not right now. Can I show you where? Can I see? So, John, like, a lot of people, uh, five people looking. Five people at the moment. Yeah, yeah otherwise there'll become more. Yeah, later. <laughs> so we're just going to look down at the boats. Thank oh, you. So, Joanne, it's um, a 90-day visa. We're staying 10 weeks. Uh, so we will fly out of Hanoi and head for Bangkok on the 8th of June. So you get your typical touristy type of places, but down this side of the road, this is a really, just a single stretch of beautiful, like if you love leather, there's so many shoemakers and handbag makers along this stretch. We've got this beautiful temple here too. I'm just going to take a quick detour because I was going to head down that road, but I don't, I've just noticed the markets aren't still there. So let's have a look in here. We won't go inside. Just have a little look for it from the front entrance. This lovely temple. And you'll notice the common theme in Hanoi, oh, sorry, Hoi An, is the, um, we're going to go down this road, is the yellow buildings. They are uniformly of this golden yellow colour. And they're just beautiful. Let me just show you this place before we turn it, take a left. All right. And here's a shop with the beautiful lanterns out the front. I'm going to backtrack and go down this laneway because I know that there are some absolutely gorgeous silk lanterns down this laneway here. Now, Hui did warn me about heading into laneways and the risk to the signal. So it's only a short one but I think it's worth it because the lanterns down here are just gorgeous. What I want to do is I'm going to turn the camera around in a moment and show you the shirt that I got made before I forget. Before we reach the end of the tour and I completely forget. Hello. So here we go, look. Isn't this gorgeous? Now I'm going to turn the camera around now while I remember. Well, I'm standing here and it's quiet. Look at the camera and go to the front camera. I tell you, it's so cumbersome. This is the shirt that I got made. This is the shirt that I got made the other day at the tailor. And try and get 
try and get the camera to have a look at it. There we go. Oh, wrong, at, wrong arm. There, there we go. <laughs> camera behave. There, that's about the best I'm going to get. All right, let's, let's turn this camera back the other way. I will get used to this. I will. I promise. I will. Camera. Camera. Back camera. <sighs> All right. Here we go. This is the view I want. <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, Joanne, because the other one that I, I had it modelled on ripped again yesterday. <laughs> The fabric is so thin that every time I put it on or take it off, I put another tear in it. So, of course, you're going to have tourist shops. That's just the way it is along here. But you've also got your tailors and you have your lantern shops. And the lanterns are just gorgeous. There's a lovely little laneway. It would be pretty during the daytime. Thanks, Sarah. It's the fabric I love. And you can go to classes. You can actually go to classes and um, pay to learn. Here, here's a lantern making class. There we go. So you can actually come along to these shops and, um, and get shown how to make these beautiful lanterns. They're just gorgeous. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Very well. You want something now? Not right now, thank you. For all those who were on my tour the other day, it's uh, even more so here. So as soon as we walk out of our hotel, walk across the road, the ladies across the road from the spas and the coffee shops um, and the tailors in our street, they're all waving to us and, hello, madame, come by, come, come shop with us today and we say yes yes later or tomorrow oh, yeah. or next week we had a massage yesterday and it was $15 each for a one-hour massage each hi Jay great to see you I was just getting ready to sleep when you popped up <laughs> Lucky you. So you can see the beautiful sky in the background. It's just gone sunset. Here's a noodle house. And I'm headed towards the waterfront. I just need to get through this section of markets and get down to the waterfront. We've got fresh produce markets here. This lady's got fish. And fresh produce. Beautiful looking fresh produce, we've got mangoes, we've got turmeric over there, spices, and this is a very busy, very busy street. I just need to get one street over and get out of this throng of people. I love a good massage, except Thai massage, too painful. Well, oh, look, look what we've got here. I had a painful one in uh, Malaysia. Like the first, what was she peeling? What was she peeling? Onions, I think, or garlic. Might be garlic, Lynn. Or shallots. Could be shallots. Is it garlic? I think it's garlic or shallots. That's, I can't zoom in, Lynn. So I'm really sorry. I can't get any closer. But I, it's either onion. Um, it's either um, these purple shallots or garlic. Um, this lady's got fresh fish. Yeah, I was talking about the massage. 
and they were Indonesian women that they used in Malacca. And the second one I had was really painful. Um, it wasn't enjoyable at all. Oops. Some nice big fish here. Whoops. It's just a little bit chaotic. Hello. That's a big market. So there's a red dragon fruit. I don't know if any of you have seen dragon fruit before, but there's red dragon fruit there. That's the dragon fruit before it's been peeled and cut. Joanne said, I have had someone walk on my back during a massage. That was interesting. Well, these ladies, I think these are mango stands, sorry. Um, these ladies were actually sitting on our rump <laughs> to massage the back. Lucky they're light. Lucky they're little. Ice cream roll. Oh, cool. that sounds interesting. Ice cream roll. Okay. All right, can I get through there? I really want to try and get to the riverfront. I've kind of gone a different way than I was planning and ended up in the middle of the market. I think I can get through here. Oh, yes. Here we go. And Jay says, I've bought dragon fruit frozen for smoothies that's a great way to have it jay all right and here we are well the markets are interesting but it's very crowded very noisy in there so this is where i wanted to be and i'm just a little concerned that we might be might be a little bit breezy that's all right might be a bit breezy so if the wind keeps up i might just need to pause and plug my um earphones and microphone in. But isn't this a lovely spot? On the waterfront here. And apparently the um, the origin of the origin of the um, lantern boats is the lantern um, festival that's held every month on the full moon but it's evolved in Hoi An into this big nightly event obviously for the tourists but it's just so colorful and bright and lively joanne says have you tried the snake fruit is that the snake skin fruit the one that um the skin looks like snake skin um i was offered a taste of it in a market in um, in Malacca, and I thought it tasted a little bit like lychee. I must get you a photo, um, Sarah. I must I must get hold of the photo that I took in Kuala Lumpur of snake fruit. It uh, well, in fact, I did. It does feature briefly in a little ten minute video that I uploaded, um, just with music of the final day basically in uh, Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> these people get past. <laughs> so these are the tourist markets here, full of your typical stuff that you'd expect to see in, in any tourist market just about anywhere. So we've got fridge magnets and coasters and chopsticks and earrings, some nice leather. But I'm here to see the lantern boats. So we have these bigger ones that you can go for a cruise on the river on these. They're delightfully decorative. So is that a fair comparison, Joanne, that it tastes a bit like lychee? Oh, no, thank you. So I haven't bought any. I, I should um, I should 
give it a go and actually buy some. But no, I've actually just had a, a tiny taste in a fruit market. Joanne says, I haven't seen snake fruit very often on my travels. Mangosteens are my favourite. Yeah, a lot of these fruits do actually taste quite similar to me. So the mangosteen and the long and fruit and the lychee and the, the snakeskin fruit, to me, all actually taste quite similar. But um, perhaps I'm not as discerning. <laughs> So what's going to happen up here is we're going to get to a point where all these bigger boats pair, sort of uh, thin out a bit and we'll start to see the little sampans. And the uh, they only, I think they only take like two or three people and the, the passengers are offered the opportunity to release candles into the water. Um, and it's supposed to represent um, freeing of spirit, something along those lines. I'm not, I'm not exactly certain of the, the significance of it, but it's, it has religious or uh, spiritual uh, symbolism. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> so on this side of the road we've got the these boats that you can hop on and that's what the inside of them looks like and then across the road we have boutiques and bars basically no music yet. When we were here the other night, and I've just spotted the sampans. When we were here the other night, there were two bars that were competing it with each other from across the river um, for their their, uh, <laughs> their music. All right, here we go. So here's the little sampans. Lots of people need to try and get through through this crowd of people let's go this way hi Tariq okay here we go here's the little sand pans now I sent Richard on a bit of a mission and I'm hoping he's going to scope out um, another bridge for us to go and see but we're going to head towards the first bridge. And then the second bridge, some of you will remember. Um, some of you will remember. Sorry, can I just squeeze through here? Sorry. Hui took us to the Japanese covered bridge. These people are all queuing. They're all queuing to get on these um, sandpans. Okay, I'm not going to get through there. I'll go this way. Oh, it's tricky. It's a challenge. Oh, right. Here we go. Look, this is the delightful, the delightful part of the night where we just have these lovely little sandpans with all their beautiful lights. Just being rowed, rowed along. They go up, up to here, then they turn around and then they head back towards the bridge. And the bridge is up in that direction, so we're going to head in that direction. I'll send Richard, oh, here's a, oh no, yeah. It's, there we go. So there's one of the candles that's just been lowered into the river. No, thank you. So that's that's one of the candle sellers. And there's another one. This lady here is selling the candles. And she has this long pole 
to put the candle on to lower it into the water. Yeah, so it looks like this, this fellow might be about to buy a candle. I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh, no, he didn't. No. So here's some of the candles. They're just sort of being um, nudged by the sand pans. towards this bridge and I said to Richard that I would meet him near the first bridge and he can let us know whether it's worthwhile heading towards the second bridge. The Japanese covered bridge is closed for renovation at the moment but what I'm curious to know is whether we should head over to have a look at it whether it's lit up at night. So I've sent him on a mission to to go and check it out. This is a delightful place to be at night time. Look at the candles here being prepared. So we might see one of these candles being lowered into the water here. Um, let's see. Now here we go. Hi Judy, lovely to see you. So we've got a bunch of people getting ready to put their candles into the water here. There's another one going in. That's a good question, Lauren. I actually don't know. I'm too afraid to ask because they're going to try and sell it to me. <laughs> oh, look, look, there's a lady right here. 10,000? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. No, 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 no. It's okay. No. Thank you. 10,000, <laughs> which is about, let me think. It's not very much. It's about 80 cents, 75 cents, something like that. So it's not very much. But to try and juggle <laughs> my gimbal and a candle and get money out, um, all, in, all with one hand, uh, it's not going to happen. Not to mention the fact that I probably don't really like the idea of putting a piece of cardboard in the river with, <laughs> with a burning candle in it. Like, what happens to all that? So, <laughs> so. so I'm happy to watch. Happy to watch them do it, but I'm. I'll stay. I'll stay back from participating myself. Wow. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm just uh, videoing. I'm YouTubing. <laughs> and Lauren says it's one of those fake candles. No, they're lit. These are these are real. Real um, flammable lit burning candles. No, thank you. Thank you. See, now I feel guilty because I'm videoing her and uh, <laughs> and not giving her any benefit from it. So, uh, Lynn says I was thinking about that about the that too. Yes, I, I, I think you, you're referring to the. The litter aspect. Yes, I prefer not to contribute to that side of things. So this is the bar where we had a beer the other night and probably where we'll end up having one again tonight before we get our grab 
or taxi back to where we're staying. And this is the lovely Golden Bridge. And then across the way is, this is where the actual night markets are. So we haven't actually been over there, over to that side as yet. But if I go up to this bridge here, we'll see the boats all going underneath. <laughs> It's really quite humid tonight. It's been very pleasant the last few days in Hoi An, but just now it's quite humid. So I'm trusting that Richie's going to find me you know, walking along with her, holding a gimbal, because I don't know if I've got much chance of finding him at all here. Okay. So we have these, like, I think they call them cyclos. So these are like the um, the three-wheeled vehicles that you can hire to get a ride around town in. Ooh, so many people. Right, over here, this is lovely. Look at all the candles going in the river here. And there are people queuing to get on boats over here. And then we've got all these little sampans going along here. And I have no idea where Richard is and I don't know how we're going to find each other. <laughs> I will probably just hang around right here and not move and hope that he finds me. So, hold the camera up and give you an idea, sense of the people. Very busy, very crowded. Okay, so basically that's the Hoi An lantern boat event that happens every night. Yeah, definitely is, Joanne. The tourism is definitely back in a big way. Bars are buzzing. Oh, no, thank you. Loving all the lights and candles, Tariq. Yep. It's very, very colourful, very energetic, very noisy. and uh, very hard to find people. <laughs> so if I sound a little distracted, it's because I'm thinking, how on earth is he going to find me? I have no idea. So as I said, my hope was that he was going to come back and find me and we would go see the Japanese covered bridge. And I'm not going to leave this spot until he finds me so i'll just stay over here
and it really is very pretty. All right. I'm going to turn the camera around. No, thank you. I'm going to turn the camera around. Um, I had hoped to meet up with Koi. Uh, I had hoped to meet up with Koi in, um, in the city. No, I thought I saw him, but, he, but it wasn't, wasn't him. I had hoped to meet up with Koi tonight. Uh, I guess he has no Wi-Fi. Who are you talking about, Richard? I, I'll need to get off my stream to try and contact Richard um, because I'll be using 4G to do so and I'm not contactable while I'm on the stream. Um, Hoy has been preoccupied with um, a personal situation for the last, um, well, since we've been here really. So we've managed to catch up with him a couple of times but we've, we have certainly haven't wanted to put any, any kind of um, pressure on him at all. To, to meet up because his first priority has been to um, attend to his personal situation. So so that's why we haven't seen very much. You should just join your live, yeah. Um, so that's why we haven't seen Hoi, but we are catching up with him tomorrow night in the city here somewhere for dinner, I believe. <laughs> and... All right, so, so yes, um, tried to, trying to catch up with Hoy has been tricky, but hopefully, um, we'll get a chance to see him a couple more times before we leave Hoi on. And hopefully we'll see him tomorrow night and again um, probably Thursday next week before we leave. So, so you will, I hope, get a chance to see him on a tour before we leave. All right. Rubbish cart trying to push through. And it's chaos here. It's absolute chaos. <laughs> All right. So I think I will leave you guys. And concentrate on trying to find Richard. So let me turn the camera around again. This has been rather chaotic, hasn't it? Back camera. There we go. And uh, all right. <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys and try and concentrate on playing, finding Richard. So I'm going to have to try and message him somehow. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got some great postcards, I'd love to see them. Um, please share them. And I will see you Saturday morning when I deliver the recording from the Mison Sanctuary, which is absolutely extraordinary. And you definitely should um, try and see that if you can. Thanks, Joanne. I've loved seeing you. Um, Lauren said, loved it, thank you. And oh, there you are, here. You found us. I was just about to disconnect. Is it worth going around to the Japanese bridge or not? No, it's, it's gutted. It's gutted, okay. Thanks, Tariq, thanks, Joanne. And Lynn said, thank you for taking us. I'm glad to be home with my morning tea watching you have an adventure. Thank you Lynn, for joining. It's been amazing. It's beautiful here. And I will see you all for my recording from the Mison Sanctuary on Saturday morning, which will be, probably be Friday night where you are. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.